our happiness and sustainability connected? Sustainability is about meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. So sustainability is about people's well-being right now. Sustainable societies are full of happy, healthy individuals who use resources in such a way that their grandchildren's grandchildren can also live happy and satisfying lives. For millennia, humans have aimed to conquer nature, to exploit natural resources, and expand human assets. And for millennia, this has mostly been fine. We live on a big planet, and there were few of us. But we have an ever-expanding population and ever-expanding desires. And recently, we've begun to exceed the boundaries of what our planet can provide. In 2009, a team of scientists published a paper that explored these bounds of what our planet can provide. They looked at what processes are necessary for human well-being and tried to find thresholds Thresholds that, if crossed, could lead to new situation on this planet that wouldn't be as easily supportive of thriving human societies. They identified nine planetary boundaries with the goal of defining the safe operating space for humanity. I read this paper as a call to action. Please, scientists around the world, help us figure out these planetary boundaries. And please, governments around the world, collaborate, work together internationally, and write laws to help us stay within these boundaries. We live on a finite planet, and we are making changes that threaten the system. Though I should clarify, I'm not actually worried about planet Earth. Earth's a planet. Earth will be fine. Earth will be here for a long time, and life will evolve to thrive under whatever conditions are here. I am worried about whether we'll make enough changes to this beautiful, bountiful planet that we will not be able to thrive on the conditions that are here. In 2015, an update to this paper indicated that we have crossed four of the nine planetary boundaries. Most of us know about climate change. We've also, on a planetary global scale, made significant changes, declining biodiversity, changes in land use, and even the way nitrogen and phosphorus are cycled on this planet. All of these changes together increase the likelihood that we'll shift our planet into a situation that's less supportive of us. Wangari Mathai, Nobel Prize winner, put it beautifully when she said, Today, we are faced with a challenge that calls for a shift in our thinking so that humanity stops threatening its life support system. We use more resources on this planet per person than ever before, and yet we're not really good at turning those resources into happier people. We buy a lot of stuff. More and more stuff, better and better stuff. Cute shoes, brand new laptops, bigger houses, faster cars. And all of that stuff comes from natural resources because all resources are natural resources. And yet this frenzy of accumulation hasn't resulted in happier people. If you look at a graph of US GDP over time, our GDP in real buying power, in real purchasing, has doubled, more than doubled since 1970. And yet, if you look at the number of people who rate themselves as very happy, it has stayed about the same. So we're using all of these precious planetary resources to buy the next greatest thing. But if it's not making us happier, what's the point? What's the point? So all of this purchasing, all this stuff, hasn't made our nation happier, and it doesn't make individuals happier either. Now certainly, if you don't have enough, if you don't have enough to eat, if you can't afford safe housing, certainly more money can lead to greater happiness. But once you have enough, 
new pair of jeans, the next iPhone, even a bigger house. It might increase your happiness briefly, but then your happiness returns to your baseline level. And you are looking for the next new thing, the next thing to buy to get that little burst of happiness. If that is true for you, notice it. We are surrounded by cultural messages, bombarded by advertisements that the way to happiness is through success at work and more stuff. Even the University of Washington, an institution that I adore, even this university, my colleague Beth Wheat pointed out our motto, be boundless, sends this message. We can't be boundless. We live on a finite planet with bounds. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if this university instead told our students that the most important work they could do was in building societies full of happy, healthy people that lived within the bounds of what our planet can sustainably provide. Now, all this buying hasn't led to happier people. In fact, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. <laughs> and I'd like to point out that all this buying is coming from natural resources. And so if you're buying something and you think this item needs to be mined or Products within this item need to be mined or harvested, and then fossil fuels need to be burned in manufacturing and again in distribution and again to take those things to the dump. I'd like to point out that this buying, buying, buying more stuff is a cornerstone of our society's sustainability problem. So I invite you, if you notice this in yourself, I invite you to reflect when you're about to purchase something. Will this item enrich my life? Is this item worth not only the money, but the true cost? The US Declaration of Independence discusses the pursuit of happiness as an unalienable right. And I urge you all to pursue happiness. Pursue happiness directly, rather than through the proxies of success and wealth. One benefit is that you're actually more likely to be happy. Another benefit is what makes us happy also moves us towards sustainability. So if you want to pursue happiness, what should you do? Research across a huge range of fields suggests that the number one thing is connection. Deepen your social connections by investing in your friends and your family. Spend time with people you love. What keeps people happy throughout their lives is rich social connections. This finding has been supported again and again and again. A second way to pursue happiness is to give. Generosity increases happiness. So if you have money to share, share it. Share it with someone who needs it or with an organization doing good work. From a happiness perspective, even better than giving money is giving time. Volunteering has tripled the happiness potential because you get happier by giving, and you get happier by connecting with something bigger than yourself, and you deepen your social connections by working with others towards a shared goal. What are you most passionate about? Find a way to give to further that passion. In this way, you get to use your life, your time, your most precious resource to support your ideals rather than just to buy more stuff. A third way to pursue happiness is to slow down, live mindfully, and cultivate gratitude. Our society is obsessed with speed. And yet, sometimes, slowing down feels so good. When I drive home from work, I get home faster, but I get home anxious and frustrated after driving in traffic. 
When I bike commute, I am sometimes wet and cold. But I get home relaxed, and I have been dazzled by leaves changing, by birds singing, and I always appreciate the opportunity to move my body. Why is a commute, why is a commute that requires me to buy gas, maintain a car, release pollutants, and leaves me feeling anxious? Why is that considered a better commute just because it's faster? Here's another example. We live in Seattle. A lot of us drink a lot of coffee. Back before the era of disposable cups, when you drank coffee, you did that one thing. You took a break. How does being able to run from one meeting to the next, to the next, to the next, without even stopping to drink your coffee, how does that enrich our lives? Why are we in such a hurry? Savor your coffee and drink it out of a real cup. Slowing down and living more mindfully moves us towards sustainability. Being in the present moment, noticing the people and things around us and how we feel in a given moment enables us to be in the present, to, to love the given great moments and get through the difficult ones. And cultivating gratitude for what we do have enables us to tune out that chatter for bigger, better, faster, and more. So if you want to live a happier and more sustainable life, what should you do? You should question your purchases and only spend your money and our resources on things that actually enrich your life. You should go after happiness directly instead of through the proxies of success and wealth. You should enrich your social relationships by spending time with your friends and family. If you have something to share, be it time or money, you should give to someone who needs it or an organization doing good work. You should reflect on the things you're grateful for each day. You should slow down, stop, enjoy your coffee. Thank you very much.